This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I have enabled what I believe is a cheat mod that has turned level scaling on. At least that is what it is alleging to me. I don't know if it will actually work, but we're going to go in here and find out. The patina over this entrance tells of age and long exposure. In spite of its degradation, the copper door is as heavily and densely forged as a vault. Gravity holds the slab firmly against stone. Let's examine it closely. Old markings in the shape of fingers suggest the Ingwithan Titans once possessed a strength to raise the door. It's difficult to- Oh, I should have had him raise the door for me while I had him dominated. <laughs> It's difficult to tell from here if anything else once controlled the door's opening or closing. You find a hole in the surrounding stone bearing a curious spiral shape. You also take note of scour marks at the base of the door, likely evidence of a pry bar used to wedge it open. The damage to the stone looks recent. If anyone made it inside, the door has long since closed behind them. Well, we can use a pry bar. You press your weight onto the pry bar for leverage. Given the force you applied, the door budges less than you expected it to. There will be a physical cost to straining yourself like this. Well, I mean... I don't think we have any other options. Why would I be the one that does it, though? I mean, why the fuck wouldn't I have, like, a dare do this? You grit your teeth and hoist with all your strength, focusing on this singular purpose. A white-hot flash of agony works, works its way up your wrist, but you press on through the pain. You manage to force open a gap between the door and the stone. As the entrance widens, a hidden gear in the stonework makes a resounding click and holds the door open. The opening discharges a breeze of stale air and something else. A feeling which emanates from the yawning darkness that makes your every hair stand on end. Oh no, my hair is standing on end. I hope it doesn't attack me. So I got injured. Which is, which is not cool. It's not cool at all. Griffin Way Station level one. Oh, it's on! It's actually on! Level scaling all! Yes! Okay, what's my injury? Minus ten deflection. Oh, good. Yeah, let's make her more vulnerable. That's fantastic. She's not vulnerable enough as it is. All right, we're in. So now all the monsters should be super fucking tough. They won't be super tough, but they should be more reasonable for our level versus how easy they were before. I shall make it so. A thin layer of sand and dust has settled upon these crates. Fine, a deer and mead. Very fine. It'd be nice if those Valians went ahead and disarmed all the traps for us. I'm sure they did, Adair. I'm sure they did. This place looks cool. Within Way Station. Wonder what that means. Can I teleport to other worlds? Can I go to Vanaheim? I don't want to go to. Muspelheim or Niflheim. Those places suck. Striding alongside the Ingwithan figures depicted on this mural, you notice what appear to be Huana. Really? Left or right, chat? Left or right? Taking votes. This is what we call interactive playthrough.
Nox says right. So interactive. It's basically like you're playing the game. Saw the shells. Hey. A luminous revenant. Doesn't really look super luminous to me. I'm just I'm just saying. Oh shit, there's all kinds of stuff here. Dude, that chain lightning wrecked some shop. What's going on? Oh, the ogres. Every time the ogres get summoned, they cause a massive shit stink. A shit stink, Josiah? I want the least injured looking Luminous Revenant. The angel got summoned too. I'll grab this one, I guess. Okay. Let's uh, cast some blessings. Triumph of the Crusader. Hey, don't run out of my buff. Too late. You too late. You already missed the buff. Damn it. When I when I start casting a buff, and especially since it t takes my character so long to cast because of her super slow action speed, because of her his, her ridiculously low dex, when I cast spend fucking five seconds casting a spell and they run out of it, I feel like like you know. Like when you're like your mom or, or somebody or your, you know, your aunt or your grandma is like, I spent all day cooking this <laughs> and you didn't hardly eat any <laughs> or whatever. Or like when you, when you're like, oh, I can't make it for dinner. I spent all day cooking this. I spent all this time preparing this buff and you just walk away. Like I'm just so unappreciated. All right, honestly, I don't need to get fancy. Just shoot him with my bow. More ogres. Dude, that guy just had a buff day. Take a runa with the five crit. Cooler air wafts up from the fissure in the floor. Luminous Audra dust. A trace amount of I know I don't need dust, I need a crate of this shit. Just one crate of luminous Audra. And I can go home happy. As you like. Cooler air wafts up. The outer wall of this room seems to have buckled inward under a tide of sand and rubble. Some Audraban. So far, no traps. Some spark crackers. It's gonna be something scary on the other side of this door. Or it's just gonna be a, a pillar of Audra. Ram it! You push 
Merda, she came after me. These people have some strangely long pauses in their conversations. Oh, really? It's just the same thing? It's the same thing. Merla, she came after me. The fuck? Where'd this little shitball come from? Ogres! Scarab beetles creeping on us from behind. I can't really tell if things are scaled up or not. They're still pretty fucking easy. Let's see. Well, the scarab beetles just have the same description as regular beetles. But what about those, those, those other new things that we just fought? Luminous Revenants. No, it's just a normal Revenant. I don't know what makes them so luminous. They have luminous essence, whatever that means. It's a trap! It's a trap! It's another trap! It's another trap! Alright, Sekiruna, go to stealth. Yeah, I get it. There's a lot of traps. That's great. Yeah, look how far away she detects him, though. It's amazing. Yeah, there's more. I understand. I get it. Yeah, can you just show them all at once so we don't have to keep doing this auto-pause thing? That'd be great. Well, here's a bunch of free traps. What got that poor soul? Let's not let it get us. That's somebody who had a rough day. As you like. I shall make it so. As you like. I shall now hear something. As you like. I shall make it so. As you like. Honestly, it's not really necessary for me to cast buffs on any of these fights so far. It's completely unnecessary. Um, I'm just casting the buffs because I want to feel like I can justify the fact that I'm half priest. I shall make it so. Realistically, I don't really need them, and by the time I cast the buffs, the fight's basically <laughs> over most of the time. And if anybody's wondering, no, you cannot cast the buffs out of combat because, like, combat only, combat only, combat only. So, you do have to wait till the fight actually starts. As you like. Some oblays. All right, now that we're we're done dicking around with those traps, get back into a group formation here. We got some quill leaf. This looks like it's something that slides down, revealing the chamber beyond or something, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Maybe when I mess with this little purple brick here. The mural depicts Huana and Nguithan figures gathered before a blue flame. Aha! I was right. Sekiruna is buffing her self-worth when she cast him. Yeah, basically. She's just trying to justify all that all that money that she spent on her priest degree. <laughs> God damn it, guys. I got a master's degree in priest buffing. You're at least stand here and let me buff you, please. There's a lot of schooling. This crocodilian idol is unfamiliar to you. 
Kuana carvings along the offering bowl suggest it was once revered. Sobek! Got some Arak. Oh, we found a magic item. We found a magic item. Magic item. Magic item. Inguith Bracers. They give you resistance to might afflictions. So that means you can no longer be stunned. If you get stunned, you'll only be dazed. And if you get dazed, you'll only be staggered. And if you get staggered, nothing will happen to you at all. That's what resistance means to afflictions in this game. It's actually really fucking cool. Although lots of lots more monsters have resistances than us having resistances. You know how that goes. Though made of wood, these arm guards have been hardened over the ages to be as strong as steel. The edges of the bracers show no signs of having been tooled or lathed. Presumably, they were grown into their final shape before being preserved through a long forgotten alchemical process. The thing is, we've all kind of got some bracers that we like. I mean, he's got these nice swordsman bracers, which I don't want him to replace. She's got these gauntlets of reliability that I don't really... Wow, when did she get so much accuracy? Oh, she's got that 10-point buff right now, right? Okay. She's got the, the healing gloves... He's got some might gloves, which is frankly better. And I've got, well, three accuracy is not very much accuracy, considering I have 105. Even without that special buff, I have 95. But also, she's not exactly a tank. She's not really getting hit by might afflictions very often. So the only person I'd really want to put it on would be like Adair or Palagina or Shodi, maybe. But I don't. Really? Maybe I will put it on Palagina. Instead of the Gauntlets of Reliability. Now she's resistant to Dex and Might Affliction, so she's going to be pretty hard to stop. Wow, she has a 93 will now? What's my will? 105. Okay, cool. I want my character to always have the highest will. If I don't have the highest will, I'm upset. But I always will have the... Ooh, he's up to a hundred. A hundred deflection. That means enemies have a minus one hundred to their attack roll against him. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Pretty fucking nice. He's basically invincible. With that much hit points, and these defenses, well, his will is pretty bad. He, he, could, he could easily be dominated by somebody like my character. Alright, so does anybody want to wear Gauntlets of Reliability? Not him, not her, not her, not him. Can you just please put this in the stash? Thanks. Uh, the thing is, I don't get a lot of misses. You know what I'm saying? With my accuracy, I barely ever miss. I never miss, actually. I don't remember a time ever that my character has missed. Um, I'd rather just have the accuracy than miss to graze conversion. So I guess the gauntlets of reliability are going to get reliably sold. For 460 copper. You are too kind, watcher. I accept. Hey, thanks for the bit, boss. You are now the bit boss. Is this the way we came before when we had Nox's choice? Or left or right? I think he made the right choice, Nox. Right was definitely a better way to go first than left. Good job. My character is basically Legolas, yeah. 
Like, if I had made her, oh my god, she'd be so much better. If I had made her a Cypher Ranger instead of a Cypher Priest, holy shit, she'd be awesome. Honestly, her Priest levels are pretty much wasted. Because, yeah, she has these buffs, she has heals, but she never needs to use them. She has buffs, but she really never <laughs> needs to use them. All she ever uses is Cypher powers and just shooting her bow. Again, I do cast the buffs sometimes, Certainly. just uh, just for the sake of trying to justify my priest levels on my main character. See guys? See guys? My buffing is important. Like right now I'll cast a buff just even though it's wildly unnecessary. Oh, motherfuckers. Everybody... Cancel that. Difficult. What do we have here? It's just some scarab beetles. Concentrate. Try to. Could you guys stand as far apart from each other as possible? That'd be great. All right, I'll cast this one then. There. There you guys go. Now you're aware. You're direly blessed. Can I get a... Don't you fucking dare, Palagina. Okay, now you can do whatever you want. There, I cast a buff. See, I'm, I'm an important party member. All the enemies are dead up pretty much by the time I cast the two buffs. The brazier's roiling flames give off intense light but no heat. Larvae, chitin leg. Mmm, delicious chitin legs. Hey, is that a trap? It is, and there's a little little bit of crappy goodies in there. Crappy goodies. Honestly, I should only bother to buff for like big boss fight type fights. Oh, holy shit, now that's a pillar of Adra. Anybody got a chisel and some wheelbarrows? Pillar of Audra descends through the ruins. I found the top, but I'll have to journey below to see the rest. Yeah, that's a Pillar of Audra, all right. Lights and shapes seem to stir just beneath the surface of the Audra, rippling past in irregular motions. That is one of the titular Pillars of Eternity right there. Kawana figures prostrate themselves before a blue flame. Got a couple of scrolls. Better sell those quick before a fucking wall steals them from me. Valentina <laughs> went off suck sulking, sulking at the corner after being reprimanded for trying to leave the buff circle. <laughs> bracket. Reprimand Palagina, bracket. Alright. That's pretty cool. Let's see what awaits us on level 2. Even scaled up, the enemies are fucking ridiculously easy. I don't know how much it scales them up either. When you have scaling on, does it scale them all the way up to your level, or does it just scale them up a few levels, but still not all? You know, it probably doesn't scale everything all the way up to your level. Because those beetles that we're killing, for example, 
I doubt they're actually level fucking 12. Because they die so fast. You seeing what I'm seeing? It's gotta be the peak. Dude, this is cool. Something has corrupted the Audra, and it grows worse the deeper I descend. The luminous Audra appears infected, taking on a darker hue as it descends. A theory on scaling is it is based on when you began the act, but I'm not sure. Hmm, well, it's allegedly on now, so... It says enemies within a scene will adjust their level up or down depending on the player character's level relative to the intended level for the scene. Hmm, so that's pretty fucking vague. Doesn't really tell us anything. I guess I should have played on Path of the Damned because... I don't know. No, I think if I had started the game on Veteran with level scaling, the difficulty would have been okay. I found him like this. Why is your blade drawn? Oh, the corrupted Audra started corrupting them. You're crazy. Stay back. And and they killed each other off. Poco Kohara expedition log. I'm glad this guy took the time to wrote, write some shit down before he got murdered. I'm going to be restarting a new game. I want the fights to last well. I'm not sure what setting to use. Well, from what I've seen, the game's pretty fucking easy so far. Even with my extremely unoptimized character. Like, I think... The game seems a lot easier than the first game. And I've seen people saying that on the internets as well. That it's a lot easier than the first game. So given that, you should probably just play on Path of the Damned. Boko Kahara Expedition Log. Or at least Veteran. Veteran with level scaling up only on. Would probably be the absolute easiest you'd want to go, I think. Because playing anything easier than Veteran is a joke in this. It's just a joke. You just one-shot everything, basically. This leather-bound logbook has Property of the Valian Trading Company stamped inside its cover. Most of the pages are dark brown and stiff, stained with some dark, aromatic beverage. Somebody spilled coffee on here. Could wait till they do their difficulty pass patch. Yeah, but how long is that gonna be? Probably a while. In fact, they said it was gonna be quite a while because they want to give everybody a chance to, like, finish the game on... on, uh... Triple Crown Solo and all the shit they want to do with the initial difficulty. And then... And then change it and make it harder and then... Institute some sort of... Some sort of way that you can get something for doing it on the harder ways or, or be recognized for it or something, they said. I don't know what that means, but... Difficulty should have been easy to sort out in testing. Well, you would think. A few pages have been ripped from the end. We set out at dawn on orders from Governor Alvari. She's heard rumor of Luminous Audra at a place called Poco Kohara. Unfortunately, this place is said to be surrounded by storms, and it doesn't appear on any of our charts. But we're told the locals at Tikawara may be able to help. 20 Priyatan. I had heard stories of bad run-ins with Huana tribes, but Chieftain Ruanu and the tribe at Tikawara welcomed us warmly. Fed us as well as could be expected and marked Pokokohara on our maps. He seems to believe the storms are magical, or else the will of the gods. I hold out hope that they can be stopped. 2 Majotan. Left for Pokokohara this morning. Vector wasn't happy about being left behind, but he was too sick to travel, and Beza was losing patience. 
Haven't seen a Rawatai in ship since we left Nekataka, but she's still afraid they'll beat us there. Well, Vector should be pretty fucking happy he was left behind now, considering what happened to the rest of them. Five Majotin. Storms were some of the worst I've seen, but we made it. We set up camp by the cliffs, but we're all looking forward to getting into the ruins. At least it'll be dry in there. Seven Majotin. We lost Gien and Olara today. I don't know what, but something about this place seems off. The others feel it too. Question mark. The murals here are incredible. Proof that the Ingwithans met ancient Huana 2,000 years ago. That they might have even built this place. I keep trying to explain this to Beza, but she won't listen. We found the top of the Adravane. It is glowing, but Beza says we have to go deeper. Okay. And then they had bad ends, all of them. The thing is, difficulty in a game like this is really hard to nail down because you have very different kinds of players. I've watched a bunch of people playing this game, as well as playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, as well as playing Pillars of Eternity 1, on streams and on YouTube, and what most people actually do, based on the, the people that I've watched, is play very badly. They don't bother with any kind of tactics, they just have their whole group randomly lumped up any old sort of way, and they just, they basically just marquee select the party, click on an enemy, and then just sit back and hope for the best. <laughs> like, and then they get killed a bunch and stuff, and they're like, it was really hard. <laughs> and I'm like, see, if that's what most of the players are actually doing, then this content could actually be pretty fucking challenging for them. Whereas if you're like, you know, trying to be tackled, especially in this game where you can set up these very complicated AI things for your characters. And I've spent a lot of time building my AI setups for each of these characters to work a certain way and to make sure that they work in certain order and the way that they're supposed to work and that they're prioritized right and that abilities are not really being wasted or, or opportunities are not really being missed as much as possible with AI, of course. And so my party runs itself really well. But most people that are playing this aren't doing all that, right? They're not setting up any AI for themselves. They're just... And so... I don't know. It's, it's just... The difficulty in a game like this, a complicated RPG like this, can be so much greater or so much lesser depending on how much the effort the player puts into it, is I guess what I should say. I wouldn't say something like how good the player is at the game, because that's sort of a vague term, but how much effort the player puts into understanding the systems and manipulating the systems to their advantage and stuff like that. I mean, it boggles my mind watching people play these games and not ever even read what their shit does. They just start the game and they just start playing and they're like, uh, I guess, you know, they're like, uh, I guess I'll use this. And they just, they, they just click shit at random, basically, and use it. They don't even know what their shit does. They don't look at, like, they don't know what the fucking stats do. They don't know what their, what their, what their powers do. They've got abilities that they've literally never used or never even looked at. They just like, they look at this and they're like, uh, the, the sunbeam sounds good, and then they just use nothing but sunbeam from then on. They never, or whatever, you know, whatever the, the thing is that they, that they just pick at random and just use that. And they've got all these other abilities that they literally have never even looked at or read what they do at all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you're gonna do that, then the game might be difficult for you. I'm getting- it's driving me crazy watching these people play Pathfinder Kingmaker. Because they're just so bad. I mean, they just don't grasp anything about how D&D &D is supposed to be played. And, uh, and of course it's a D&D &D based game. And I mean, literally, every fucking person that has- that's been playing that beta, it's this. Mar Marquee Select Party, click on an enemy, Hope for the best. Just sit there and hope for the best. 
and then their party members are getting mauled because they don't have anybody tanking because they just sent everybody in to get Rabagro at the same moment in a big fucking clump. Their fucking healers and casters are standing right there in melee getting opportunity attacked for trying to cast in melee for some dumb reason. They're, they're fucking, they never heal anybody. People start, their health starts going down and no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna cast a heal. No, no heals. No, oh, why, why are half of my party unconscious? <laughs> I don't know, it just it drives me nuts watching these people play these games. And then they complain about how hard it is. I'm like, that did not need to be that hard. <laughs> Upon this mural, an Ingwithan raises a sacrificial knife over a pliant Huana figure. Because that's mostly what it is. When I watch people struggling with an RPG like this, or like any any RPG of this style, uh, or even more so with like a Divinity Original Sin or something. <coughs> when I watch people struggle with those games, 99% of the time, the only reason they're struggling is because they didn't bother to read anything. They just don't read shit. They don't read the pop-ups, the tutorials, the, the, the tool tips for anything. They don't read anything, and so they don't really know how anything works. <laughs> and I mean, if that's how you want to play, that's fine, but you're always going to be struggling. It shall open to me. If it's, if it's a difficult are. game. Alright, we easily picked that lock. What game am I talking about? Uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker. It's a game like this, but based on Pathfinder. The the role-playing game, which is basically 3.5 D&D. Desert Imps? Alright. I'm not casting those useless-ass buffs this time. I'm just- SUNBEAM! Actually, that kind of looks like a good idea this time. That looks complicated. Sunbeam! That's it! Bravo, you're that. Fuck it, I'm not gonna use any of my anything anymore. I'm just gonna nothing but sunbeam every fight. No, I only have three sunbeams per fight, so. If I wanted to read, I'd pick up a book. Try to go to the dungeon, bottom of the dungeon, into the stronghold in Pee-wee, found it without- Yeah! Pretty fucking challenging, considering it's like a 15 level mega dungeon. Might not be 15. It's a lot, though. Might be 13, or something. You're definitely not meant to go to the bottom of that place when you first find it. You're supposed to go maybe down a couple levels, then come back later, then come back later, then come back later. What the fuck? Oh, desert imps, huh? Do we know anything about these desert imps? We don't really need to know anything about them, sister. What the fuck even is an imp? They're not beasts, are they? No. Are they wilders? No. Are they primordials? Yes. Hmm, it just says the same thing as brine imps. Honestly, my party doesn't even need me. I can just do this. Look, we don't even need most of the party. Nobody's really doing anything except for Aloth and Adair. Look how invincible he is. He's like not even taking damage because they can't hit him. There's the ogres doing nothing up in the other room. He's in here just soloing the encounter. This is apparently with level scaling on. That's just sad. It's it's on only scale up, right? Yeah, okay. Yes. Thank you. 
I shall make it so. Indeed. Netflix. What? What's this about Netflix? When does that Witcher show come out for Netflix? I want to watch that. Nice little pool. Hey. Ultra Animat. Okay. Fuck it, they don't need me. Maybe they do. Oh, corrupted Adra Animats. Alright, my party might actually need me for this one. Alright, well I made a mistake in the beginning. With Saint? Okay, I don't know what that thing is, but it needs to be my friend. Even by the time I fucking dominate one thing, everything's dead. This cannot- level scaling cannot possibly be on. Because everything is still just stupid easy. Oh. Getting some good loot now. Rune powder. What did we just face? Animats. Animats were initially created to serve as guardians for royal tombs. Their earliest creators bound the souls of their strongest warriors and servants to intricate sculptures, which were made of various materials in accordance to the rank of the soul captured within. As the knowledge of the technique for this process became more widespread, powerful animancers started creating their own animats to serve as personal guardians using whatever weapons and materials lay at hand. Animats can only be created through the use of loyal souls that hold a powerful dedication to protecting their charges, while the ritual to create them can still be performed upon unwilling subjects a lack of resolve in a participant's soul can result in abominations, which immediately attempt to destroy themselves in a violent manner, often inflicting collateral damage in the process. Even successful creations remain vulnerable to the onset of doubt, and most animat creators take great care not to allow such doubts to manifest. Do not doubt yourself if you're an animat. And then there's the corrupted ones. And then there's the Ingwithan Saint. That thing looks awesome. Some fucking wizard, basically. Ingwithan Saints hold vigil at locations deemed essential to soul manipulation, perhaps even the reincarnation cycle itself. As befitting the importance of their task, only the most elite and respected and within men and women contributed their souls to the guardian vessels intended to last for all time. Eternal service to the cause of reincarnation was seen as the ultimate expression of self-sacrifice, as these esteemed individuals deserving of the highest honor would never partake in the cycle they laid down their existence to defend. Consequently, saints are more powerful and zealous than their cousin titans, which are rudimentary constructs by comparison. It didn't seem that powerful to me. I pretty much just dominated it and then we beat its ass. I can get it to spill its secrets. The woman at the end must have been staged. Oh, you're probably talking about whatever video she linked there. It shall open to me. It's done. As you like. Wow, locks and traps all for this, huh? Well, some Audra Antiacs, those are pretty valuable. Not currency in the traditional sense. 
Any acts are awarded to Glanfathans for noteworthy deeds. They are palm-sized, intricately carved discs of Audra that commemorate the deeds of the recipient. Are you sure they're not coasters? Are you sure they're not coasters? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure those are coasters. The etchings upon this sarcophagus have been worn down past legibility. Got some Andre coasters. What is that? Oh, it's a sigil. Back that ass up. We're not we're not doing that. Sunbeam! I just don't know why everything is so easy. It's on fucking veteran difficulty. Level scaling is alleged to be on. It's just... Like, we're not... Everything's dying, like, instantly. Alright. There's a... There's an asshole thing over there. Oh, Aloth, you gotta deal with this. This is you, Aloth. She. how about not chain lightning? Don't act like you don't see that thing over there. Okay, good. Good job, Aloth. Quickly, Nox, name a book. That's... I can get it to spill its secrets. Pick the lock. I shall. Back to your position. Quick save. Certainly. Well, I don't want to go down to level three just yet. Hey, they're pretty good at that. Oh, they're climbing up. That's cool. All right, climby McClimerton. Here. Why am I running? Okay, it's fine. Oh, did you want to chase me? Dominated! Skeletal Sorcerer, let's take him out. Nicely done. Let's ace this archer that I dominated since all the enemies are rapidly dying. I love how you actually see all the individual bones fly in the air. When you when you explode those skeletons. Is there a reason I you ha it's a bow. It's a bow. You don't need to run that close to a guy to shoot him with a bow. He's about to be undominated in a second. Oh, 
Oh, jibbed into icy bone chunks. Fine hide armor, fine breastplate. Do you like that breastplate you're wearing, Bob? It's fine. Skeletal Wizard's Grimoire, a fine robe. Something I can do. Torch. Torch in the shadows. Something I can do. Don't worry, guys. I got you guys with the buffs. The extremely necessary priest buffs. Alright, how about everybody run in there? That'd be good. Don't worry, Palagina. I got us with this buff. Wait, what is that? Is there a sigil in here? Oh shit, this is a boss fight. I don't know who that guy is, but he's rude. Alright, so it's time to actually... I really do need the buffs. I wonder what this thing on the ground is. I should probably not stand in it, should I? And yet, it doesn't really seem to be doing anything. Dire Bless. Alright, can I dominate this asshole with the name? 61% chance. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> the boss is dominated. LOL. What are these amphoras all about? I'm gonna shoot them. Just in case. Who's not getting enough pen? He's only got seven armor. Oh! Round two! That's fine. Come on in, guys. No, no, shit. Still had the whole party selected. That was my bad. Alright, assholes. Get you some holy radiance. Just for fun, get you some more holy radiance. From our other priest. Well, that was a lot easier than I was expecting. Solution, Awakened Audrey, Exceptional Greatsword. You can barely make out the words upon the sarcophagus. Here rests the head that bore a crown of devotion. that guy was. Some kind of lich sort of dude. But not, apparently. Maybe he was just an Ingwithan saint. That was super easy. I guess it wasn't really like a boss boss. It was just like a mini boss, but still. It's kind of sad.
You know, I'm complaining about how easy it is. I'm sure the first time I fight a dragon in this game, I'm gonna get my ass handed to me. Ooh, look at this place with these huge, huge, huge statues holding this, like, bridge up. This place is fancy. So fancy. All right, there's traps. I yeah, I see them. Cool. I'm gonna change my auto pause. I do like trap detected auto pause, so I'm not going to turn that off. Alright, this is the room where we came in. So. There's nothing new here. What do you need? Oh, it's a bunch of spiders. They can come to us out here. to 185. I'm ascended after one shot from my bow. Fucking crazy. send it lot more spiders coming Like how Shoddy and Aloth are just chilling in the hall. Okay. That was supremely easy. Again. The only thing I was worried about was traps in that room. That's why I had us back in the hallway in the first place. Thought there could be some traps, since we hadn't had the chance to really check the room out. Hmm, wonder if that'll blow, like, blow open a thing in the wall right there, if I... Oh? Aloth, I call upon you to do that fun thing that you do. <gasps> it did blow the wall open. Oh, that's so cool. As you wish. Traps. Scary monsters. 
Something about this seems a little too safe. Suspiciously safe. Soulbound dagger. That's almost, that's only the second soulbound item we've found. Merrick's Amanth, soulbound, exceptional quality, plus five accuracy. All daggers get that. Corona of the soul. A fragment of the target's soul is set aflame. It smolders for short duration before erupting, dealing burn damage to nearby enemies. 10% chance on hit. Binds with Paladin, Priest, or Rogue. Which means... It would bind with Shodi, or me, or Palagina. Palagina is not going to use a fucking dagger. I'm not going to use it. So that means the only person who would potentially use it is Shodi. This bronze blade, the length of your forearm and significantly sharper, doesn't seem at all tarnished or dulled by its age. A vein of Audra runs its length, from the pommel through the grip and almost to the tip. It pulses faintly. You located this dagger in the depths of Pokogahara, where the murals suggested it was a sacrificial tool of ancient Ingwith. It whispers its name to you. The Dead Soul. Well, okay. Let's bind it just to see what new power it gets. Now that it's bound... Well, it doesn't get any new power, apparently, until you do 250 burn damage. Uh, I don't really see her using this, honestly, because... Let's compare. This does way more damage. This is faster, though. This has more penetration. This is more accurate. This has Corona of the Soul. This has nothing. Let's see. Right now, she's doing 21 to 31. She would go down... 14 to 19. Attacking once every four seconds. Attacking once every 5.4 seconds. Accuracy of 83. Accuracy of 84. Does she have dagger proficiency? She doesn't. I mean, it could be worth having her use it just so that we can level it up and see what cool thing it gets next. Oh, you like Aloth's new look, Jen? You, you like his fashion sense? <laughs> uh, the red hat. He's got the little red hat band and everything and the little red feather. Make part show to attack party members with it for a while until it levels up. Now that sounds like some cheat and ass shit. I like Adair's portrait now too. I I liked a G Palagina's old portrait better though. Fun trade between friends. Trade of injuries. Hmm. I guess she can use this dagger for a while. It's a cool looking dagger. I mean, she's not a big melee damage dealer anyway. She mostly stands around buffing for quite a while in the beginning of the fights. Again, probably unnecessary, but... I like to pretend, I have their AIs set up so that what they'll do, like, if it actually is a hard fight, they'll be ready for it.
It wasn't it wasn't a profile or a straight on. It was it was like in between. It was like at an angle. Like halfway in between straight on and a profile. Okay. Well, we'll try it out. No, we're not going to attack our own party members. Ooh, an old copper key. Buana guard leather armor. Let's see what that leather armor looks like. I mean, I'm not going to wear it, but let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty cool looking. Very tribal. Unfortunate that it's basically useless to us right nice now. Disarm this shit. I shall make it so. As you like. I shall make it so. God damn it. Are you motherfuckers serious? One thing the AI does not know how to do is run the fuck around traps. Nope, that just pissed me off too much. I can't have my party run over the traps while I'm disarming them. It just can't. It's too embarrassing. Yeah, you can lure enemies into traps. I prefer to disarm them though. It's not like we need them to be hurt by the traps. They're so weak anyway. Everybody, back the fuck up. Now, me, sneak over here and disarm these traps. I shall make it so. As you like. I should see things not right. How the fuck did I trigger it? How did I trigger it? Impossible. Thanks for the host, Brad. I was standing on the stairs. I wasn't even by those spikes. Okay. I trust Look, you. there's only one way this can go down that's acceptable. As you like. I shall make it so. As you like. I shall make it so. All right, that's much better. With and Saint. Look at that thing. Pretty fucking cool looking. Finish them! Am I already ascended? No, I think I'm slightly shy of being ascended. Finish them. 
Now I'm ascended. Which lasts for 27.9 seconds. But all the enemies are gone. You're sneaking, the pet is just following you around on sneak, yeah. Nobody would hurt the pet. Indeed. Hey, that wasn't half bad. Fuck you, Amphora. Small grooves run the length and breadth of this altar, directing the flow of blood toward a central channel. So this is where everybody would lay down and get ritualistically killed, and their blood would go to this thing in the middle. Sigil of Nightmares Wardstone, that's helpful. Um, and that's how they would empower the Adra to do all their bullshit soul experiment shit. Okay, that's all this, that's all there is for this level. We'll go down to the next one. sound. Mm, lightning bolts. Obsidian flake. That guy died for some obsidian flake. Okay. Hold on, everybody. How does one turn this shit off? Oh, apparently I have to destroy the essence batteries? Nonsense is done. Embarrassing way to go for some obsidian flake, yeah. One of figure's sacrifice seems to have supplied the pillar with energy, depicted in blue flame. Another type of pillar. 
Ram that shit. Yeah, it was pretty fucking easy to disable. Like, what the fuck is the point of that trap? Like, <laughs> if anybody comes in here, you know, and they don't have a bow or any kind of ranged magic or any or a rock to throw, if they don't have any of that, boy, they're gonna have a hard time getting through here. <laughs> Let's spend untold amounts of money and magical energy and resources creating this highly complex but ultimately useless trap. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be a trap. Maybe it wasn't a trap at all. It just functioned as a trap as far as we were concerned. Maybe it had another purpose and it just and it just was like wigging out or something. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly, Asko. It might not be a trap, just a broken circuit. The stone and glass of this contraption vibrates with some internal energy, setting the copper rings to buzzing. Wow. That is one fucking angry looking outro Looking pillow. at that thing's enough to make me queasy. For the love of God, don't touch it. Energy pulses through the twisted column like an irregular heartbeat, straining at the bounding walls. Okay. Where does that go to? We don't know. Good night, boss. Try licking it. Licking it is always a good idea. See you later, boss. Have a good one. Hey, son. How you doing? Welcome. Ah, there's the control this thing panel. There's a question, there's a magnifying glass here and it won't let me click on it. Ah, I hate that. I want to know what it says. Alright, I'm not messing with that yet. We're coming back to this room. Let me explore the rest of this level first. There might not be much to explore actually, but whatever there is, we're going to check it out. Ooh, a soul that needs to be soul visioned. A woman lies dead on the tiles, her skin discolored with decay. Her rent flesh sloughs away to reveal bone. No maggots or bugs have reached her here, which only means that there's more of her left to assault your nostrils. A sword lies discarded beside her. Pack lies beneath her arm, and the barest wisp of essence hovers over her body. Oh, uh, this must be, um... Raza, or whatever they said. The, the name of the, um, leader of the Valian Expedition. Let's examine the body. The woman's body lies at the end of a trail of smeared, crusted blood. The damage to her armor suggests a fight. Though it looks like her attacker, or attackers, allowed her to crawl away to die. Holding your breath, you kneel to search the body. As you handle her remains, clumps of muscle and flesh fall off. Ew. <laughs> Mate, raising a fresh wave of rot. Most of her belongings are slimy and rancid with putrescence. But her pack has escaped the worst of it. This is Sliggins in its purest form. Inside, you see a few torn pages in a carved figurine. Let's take the pages. 
They look like they were ripped from a book or journal. They're brown. Beza, that's right. They're brown and warped with spilled drink and scrawled with a few brief entries. Man, everybody in this game spills shit on their journals. Let's take this figurine. The wooden figurine has the body of a woman and the head of a fish. Ah, oh, Nagati again. With beady eyes and a gaping, snaggle-toothed maw. Pale and rough textured, like it was carved recently. But as your thumb slides across the bottom, you notice something carved there. Oh, because I'm a priest. You probably wouldn't recognize it without your years of religious study. Yeah, all that time I spent at fucking, uh, at fucking priest college. Worth it now. But it looks like a confusion hex. You feel a sudden sharp headache. Take her weapon. The saber boasts a viciously serrated edge. Despite the state of its former master, the blade appears to be in good condition, and you retrieve it. Now we'll read her soul. The brief images you see are scattered and confused. You are an explorer with the Valian Trading Company, and you are searching the ruins with your comrades. At least they used to be your comrades. Now you're not so sure. Things have been going wrong ever since you got to this island. First with Gien, then Olara. Though it might have started earlier, on Tikawara, maybe when Vector fell sick. You hear a scream in the distance. You don't know where the others are. You don't know why there's blood on your hands. You don't know why it's so hard to think. But you remember that you were supposed to be quiet to avoid the notice of whatever is down here. Something moves in the darkness. And she's dead. And she's dead. So dead. All right, what do we get? Beza's pages. These pages have been torn out of a larger book. They are stained brown and stiff with some dark, fragrant liquid. The entries begin thus. Well, okay, we got quite a journal here. I wanted so badly to find Pokokohara, and now we are stuck here. No one dares to leave while the Titan roams outside, so we must hope we can find another exit somewhere in the ruins. Alara must have triggered it. It did not move until she began prying open the door, and before we knew it, it had Gian. The others do not say it, but I know they blame me for failing to save him. Smudges of dirt from the author's hand streak the page around the next entry. Olara is gone too. We move more slowly now, wary of traps and monsters. I detest this creeping about, and Duenio's stopping nearby makes it all pointless. But Falero has almost lost his nerve, and I do not think he can take another nasty surprise. The next entry is filled with big, crooked letters that loop and swoop like a child's. Hashtag loop and swoop. None of us thought of dominating the Titan outside, so we're stuck in here. The others sleep. We decided against candles or campfires, so I write in the glow of the Adra. It is good, because I hear something moving in the dark, even if the others do not. Falero insisted that we move slowly, so he could study the murals and the patterns in the floor. He thinks to save us from mishaps like the ones that befell Gian and Alara, but none of that will help if the creatures here catch us. Dueno hides a limp. But the way he looks at Falero and me makes me think he is hiding something else, too. They grow more and more paranoid with each hour in this place. Ugh. When they awaken, we will press forward so that we may be done with it. In the meantime, I will keep the pages with my own observations. I cannot trust the others with them. The next entry is hastily scribbled. Valero lost the logbook and accuses me of sabotage. Sabotage! He's so busy sketching these murals that he forgets why we're here. But I saw the Adra and I understood. This place is sick. We are here to cure it. But Falero says the Huana were here long ago. That the murals prove as much. I think one Amawa looks much like another. But he gave me an idea. Right now we spend blood and treasure searching for luminous Adra. Our task would be much easier if we could make regular Audra luminous by enriching it with live souls. As I look at the equipment the Ingwithans built here, so like the machines our Animancers construct, I wonder if they once did this very thing. 
And we have the villagers of Tikawara so eager to help. Oh, he wants to go back. She wants to go back and get villagers from Tikawara and bring them here and sacrifice them itself and power up the Adra. That's, uh, that's pretty fucked up. Fun trade between friends. When we return to Nakataka, I will present my idea to, to Lueva Alvari. I do not think Director Castell has the stomach for it. Nor my companions, I fear. Hmm. Okay, so she went a little bit nutty. Nagati Idol. This is a figurine carved in the shape of a woman with the head of an anglerfish. Beza's Toothed Blade. Beza was a senior member of the Collegia de Defensia Mutio, a prestigious Valian dueling society. The club's standard duel for members of equal standing was single blade against single blade, fought until first blood was drawn. The duelists wore leather armor, padded doublets, and masks, enough to prevent a minor strike from becoming a lethal blow. Beza had a blade constructed that proved extremely effective at biting through such protection. Her fellow duelists came to fear her and her jagged saber. Okay, so when she crit, he crits somebody with it, they lose armor rating. And it's exceptional. And you can put some rending cuts on it, make that even better. You get some action speed increase when you hit healthy targets. Or you can supervise it. I mean, that's not bad. But it's not great either. So that's Beza. Oil of Allure. Man, I thought that was a dildo. <laughs> just saying, it kind of, I just, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm like, whoa, what's that doing in here? It does say Allure. Too much allure. Too much. Scandalous. Here's the Inguithin machine. Alright, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, well, I could go up these stairs, or I could... Or I could mess with this thing. I guess before I go up the stairs, we'll mess with this thing. The machine at the base of the pillar is in bad shape. The Audra panels are warped and the copper is corroded, but it looks whole. A high, keening sound comes from the Audra. Let's examine it. You check the copper connections and knobs. Everything appears to be intact, but none of the essence of the pillar runs through it. Keening grows louder. I guess we'll try to activate it? You turn the Adra wheel and adjust some of the sliders. At first, nothing happens. Then, you feel a fluctuation in the ether. The wailing grows louder. Did we just open a fucking portal? Essence moves within the Adra, opening a dimension as raw and distorted as a fresh wound. Something in that place pulls at your soul, and the distant voices cry out again. Wow. Whatever is corrupting the Audra is embedded deep within it. I feel a presence coming from within the pillar. I may be able to reach the source of the corruption by projecting my soul into it. That seems like a good idea. What could go wrong? All right, before we jump in any fucking crazy-ass portals, I just want to see where this goes. Wait. We're back outside? How come we didn't... Just go in this way. I don't think we could.
Cast dominate on the portal. <laughs> Ram the portal. All right. We're gonna go in here. Quick save completed. The dimension within the Adra is open, tugging at your soul. Let's project our shit in there. This is a cool place. Wow. Considering this is a side quest, this isn't even part of the main story. This is a fucking side quest, and they got crazy dimension of craziness. A forest within the Adra tugs your soul from your body and into a realm of pure essence. You become aware of a fragmented, dreamlike landscape. It is not a physical place, but rather a shape your mind has formed from the teeming energy. So is your presence in it. I got an itch. Can someone scratch my elbow? I left it with my body. <laughs> your actual body is still in Pokokohara. You feel the cold tiles beneath it and smell the dusty air around it, but you cannot return to it. Something here has a hold on you. The voices you heard outside the pillar scream and wail somewhere close by. That's good. This place seems perfectly safe, am I right? these people? They look like Huana. Um, okay. You reach the source of the tumult, a festering mass of corruption. Hundreds of souls cry out within it, trapped and twisted by the accumulating decay. If this is how the gods run the beyond, I'm sure Valian Anamancy would be an improvement. A handful of souls, still fresh and mostly whole, surface to confront you. One of them separates out from the others and stares you down with grim, hateful intensity. You do not belong here. He looks crazy. Oh, it's Anaharu. This is the old chief of the... Or the old priest of Tikawara village. The one that left after doing some kind of thing that they didn't like him to do. The speaker takes the form of an older Huana man, his visage shifting as if reflected in rippling water. He is not a physical presence, but rather a soul given shape. Sekaruna, captain of the Sea Cow, at your service. We are the dead. His voice hits in your mind like a clapper to a bell. We're talking to a lost soul? Hold on, before you say any more, Look into the light of my lantern. Eager, she raises the lantern high, shaking it back and forth to scatter the light around in a skittering dance. Halogen is pissed. He bares his teeth at her and squints as a trickle of essence leaves his body. When he looks away, the trickle stops. Maybe you're dead. I do not see Tangaloa's mouth or Sirono's doors anywhere. And here's Beza, the person, the woman whose body we just found, whose journal we just read, and whose sword we just took. A second form takes shape near the first and glowers at him. Their essences sharpen and flicker at each other. A Valian variant of Bareth, god of death, cycles and doors. Okay. My storm reads Pokokahara. 
Ngati's fist drags Valian ships to the deep. If you come to stop this, you have already failed. His form gathers definition. Whether or not his words are true, he believes what he's saying. You're responsible for the storms? How? Ngati holds our souls in this swamp, cut off from the sea. The flow of essence stops here. He gazes out at the shifting scenery beyond your floating platform of what only resembles stone. And rots, apparently. I don't know where Aerithus is at this point, Asko. I think he's at the teeth of Magron waiting for us to meet him there or something. She wrinkles her nose at the putrefying mass and checks under her boots. What do you mean, rots? Souls are going bad cut off from the cycle? My lantern looks fine and healthy, though. Alagina hates the piety. I don't claim to understand it, girl. I'm a miner, not a mystic. I'm a mystic. <laughs> I'm a mystic mystic with the mystic voice. She aims a hard glare at Anaharu. The cistern overflows into the world the of the living, stirring the sea and skies with the fury of the goddess, bringing storms. His lips curve into a slight smile. We got a mystic option here. There's nothing divine about broken machinery around an Adra pillar. The gods laugh at machines, I say. Nothing built of kith hands can rest away their will. In spite of his words, he regards the corruption over his shoulder with a frown. No souls travel through here. The Adra screams. Ngati grins, showing her fangs. This is where Valian's scheming ends. Ngati's servant holds the dam closed to flood the living world with her vengeance. I'm so sick of fucking Andra slash Nagati. She's constantly fucking shit up and doing crazy shit. Worst god ever. He places a hand over the spot his heart once occupied. Are you sure? They'll do anything to protect an investment. Though you're only holding a mental projection of the pages, Anaharu peers down at them and absorbs their meaning. He turns his gaze toward Beza. Don't look at me. You report to your fish goddess, and I report to Songreta Mea Compressa. Anaharu silences her with a glare. All right, the Congress of the company. I am the storm of my people. Adra is the staff I wave to churn Ngati's kingdom. He opens his palms. The ether around you reacts at once, whipping up the ambient essence into a frenzy. Far away, you think you can hear furious winds growing in response. Compensating, are we? <laughs> you will not laugh when I scatter your soul to the breeze. Madiko, to arrive at the far side of death and find this babbling brook. He presses her temples with both hands. The Valians will not overrun us while I have the strength to repel them. It furrows his brow toward Beza. If you think bad weather will hold back my countrymen, you have greatly underestimated us. They will depart when the waters rise to drown their investments. This I know. You're killing Tikawara. You lost the trial of waves. These storms chase away fish and blight crops. You're the one killing Tikawara. Fool! Ngati will stop churning the seas when the outsiders leave. Then I will be reborn as a Ranga. Hmm. I don't know about that, pal. 
pirates and slavers drove my tribe from our old roots and havens. Now, the Valians do the same with paper. They come to pull Adra from the earth and mill it like grain. Yeah, I know. You speak as though this Adra has been the heart and soul of your tribe for generations. Though you have only recently come here. He's got a point. Adra is the heart and health of the dead fire. You whose breast is cold and still would know nothing of this. Oh damn. He said she got a cold and still breast. There is nothing more to say. Here at the end, outsider lies are a dull edge. He glowers at you, the ambient essence growing sharp and turbulent around him. Hmm. Hmm. No more fighting. Let me con convince your enemies to leave. Coin is their only language, I say. Reason and compassion are bitter to their tongues. This is where all things stop. No one leaves, I say. He balls his hands into fists. His shoulders nodding with tension. Akosi, let's not be hasty. Some of us still have bodies out there. She puts up a hand in protest and glances to the souls of her crew. You don't plan on staying here, Ak? Why not let us tag along and see if we can reunite with our... what we left behind? Okay, but you don't get your sword back. The dead guy accuses Palagina of having a cold and still breast. Yeah. She spreads her palms open in a show of benevolence. Uh... Knox Bluff. I'll chisel you out. <laughs> that is a stupid ass bluff. Swim up to the edge of the Audra and I'll chisel you out. Because that's how it works. It never ends well when you stuff mismatched essence into one body. You're not lying, are you? She glances back toward her crew and winces. You've all served your captain with distinction, but I think this is where we part ways. She nods to each of them in turn. This me. She salutes her crew, many of whom vanish on the spot, their souls joining the ambient ether. Beza nods to you and departs soon after, grimacing, and Aharo advances. Uh, well, some of the enemies disappeared at least. I mean, I don't expect this to be very hard. Dude, he just got fucking knocked on his ass. Juana Spirit, Dead Explorer, Dead Adventurer. Here come the ogres. Those summons really slow things down. Even like the main boss fight of this entire thing was ludicrously easy. You subdue the furious souls, ripping them into motes of their constituent essence. Beyond this cloud of essence you feel the pull of the cycle, a force that steadily increases. This pillar remains steadfastly blocked from the natural flow. Power still hums through the essence. Sending it through the cycle would restore the Adra around you. Fragmenting it would detonate the delicate ballast of power, destroying the pillar. Either way, the steady tug of the beyond grows. You must decide quickly. 
Return the natural flow. Detonate the Adra. Oof. I don't... I don't know what to do. I know that, like, who was it? The Rao Times wanted me to destroy the pillar? I feel like destroying the pillar would be best for the Tika Warrens, unless the, the Audra being here in some way benefits them in some way that I don't understand. But if I destroy the pillar, then the Valians will have no interest in these islands and they'll, they'll leave. Of course, that might not really be the best for them either. I feel like either one of these that I do, it's going to end up bad. <laughs> you're only about two hours into the game, you're going to restart and crank up the difficulty? Yeah, that's a good idea. If we restore the luminosity, the thing is, right, hypothetically, if everybody was going to leave this shit alone afterwards, it would be best to restore the flow and let the Audra be back in its natural state doing its thing that it's supposed to do with souls and shit. But, if I restore its luminosity, all that's going to happen is the Valians are going to come in and fucking mine the whole thing and grind it up into fucking powder. Which means they're functionally going to destroy it themselves anyway. So I might as well detonate the Audra, destroying the pillar, so that they can't come in here and fuck with shit. And Tikawar can just go back to being normal how it was before. And... The Rauhtans will also like that as well, because they kind of gave me a quest to do that. So I'm detonating it. Ram the pillar! You animate the corrupted essence into a destructive force, ripping the space around you apart. You escape back towards your body before you are destroyed too. Or I guess we... I shall stand here. There's seriously no loot? Of course, I guess we're in the fucking spirit world, whatever, so you're not really gonna get loot out of here. You cling to the tether of your soul, racing to the safety of the material world, even as the immaterial one warps around you. You feel it falling apart, disintegrating into profound emptiness. You are terrified it will destroy you, too. You return to your body, feeling as though you've just fallen into it from a mountaintop. Your companions gasp and groan beside you. You covered your ears against the cracking, shattering Audra. We just rammed the pillar, guys. We just rammed the pillar. Dude, that pillar got wrecked. Quests updated. Three different quests just got updated by this. Alright, Terms of Trade. Company representatives will want to know what happened at Poco Kahara. Alright, I don't think the Valians are going to be happy about this at all. Matsura will want to know what happened at Poco Kahara. She will be happy. I have destroyed the Audra, ending the storms as well as any ambition to mine Luminous Audra. I can also go back and talk to the people at Tikawara and s see if I can tell them like, Yo, I met your old priest, he was a real dick, had to ki re-kill him. Shattered, the Audra pillar stands dull and lifeless, its soul energy dispersed into the surrounding air.
There's an actual shadow of a cloud drifting by. That's pretty cool. You can even see the cloud shadows on the map. I hate when the music just cuts out like that. It always makes me think I'm crashing or something. But I don't think I am crashing because I still got red circle. Little red circle bouncing along really loud. Never mind. <laughs> Couldn't even sing a simple song. Alright. Well, so much for Okokohara. and hagfish. I still need to find still need to find a couple of islands islands surrounding Tikawara okay like this is Tikawara there was that one that one doesn't have anything on it this obviously isn't one of the uncharted islands there could still be an uncharted island down here, or over here, or up here. So I guess we're going to look around a little bit. What's that? Oh. There's the compass. I wonder what I wonder about this island. Looks like there's no way to land on this island without going through a storm though. Which is not great. Okay, we're on water, so we're gonna put... We're gonna get on fruit over here. So that these cancel each other out, so we stay at 81. Yeah, 
We can't really land here while that fucking storm is there. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just find out if I can just sneak through there. Sneak through. There's nothing here, though. You hear a knock at the door to your quarters. Impenetrable wall of fog on the edge of the map. Yeah. An unexpectedly cold wind blows across the deck of the ship, and even after several hours has not abated. Eld Engram sheepishly knocks on your cabin door. Uh, we've we've seen this one before. It went from Andra. He wants me to. Oh, this is a little different, though. His brow dotted with beads of sweat. Back in your pardon, Captain, but this is an ill wind sent by Andra. We've sailed too long without offering her tribute. She's sure to punish us if we don't give her what she's due. He tilts his head toward the hatch, beckoning you to follow him on deck. I'm gonna explain the science. And realistically, it's Adair that's explaining the science, but whatever. This wind is a natural phenomenon, nothing to worry about. You explain at length how ocean winds can shift over time, and, in certain places, seem unnaturally cold or warm for extended periods of time. I just basically give him the wind-blown chicken speech. Eld Engram protests, but has no educated arguments to make against you. In the end, the sailor acknowledges that you're the captain and must know best in a thin voice that suggests otherwise. By the following day, the cold wind is lifted. The crew appears satisfied, but there is a lingering worry that Andra has been slighted. Fuck Andra. Andra- good! How do I slight her more? I would like additional Andra sliding, please. Now we're down to 79, though, so I actually want to go for just, like, a day. Not a lot down here in this corner, is there? Well, there kind of can't be, because they put the compass rose right there. So there can't be anything there, or else it would have to be depicted on the map, and... Right, we're back up to 81. Back to water, fuckers. Well, here's something. It's all mist-shrouded. How does one even? Holy shit! This is a place! Like, a fucking town! Well, this is not what I'm looking for right now. We'll come back there one of these times, though. I need to get a lot more... The wind... The windle... The windless... The windless... Wastes, apparently. But there's a splintered reef like crazy town of some kind right there by these windless wastes.
You find two of your crew members playing a game in the hold. If it's Caravan, I swear to Christ I'm kicking them off the ship. You're examining cargo in the hold when the sound of whispers and muted laughter draws you deeper into the darkness. You carefully round a stack of crates to find Oswald and Nia engaged in a round of Orland's head. I remember this game from, uh, from Pillars 1, from the White March. Oswald salutes. Hello, Captain. We're putting down copper on Orland's head. If you're looking to join for a round... I don't want to play a round. I already know what Orland's head is. Maybe next time. The Mara Mara Trench. The choppy seas stretch towards the horizon, curls of dark blue capped with lines of foamy white. Captain! shouts Jatupak from the rigging. There's something in the water to port. Off the port side rail, you see a dark sh. Oh no. It's the sea monster. Off the port side rail, you see a dark shadow rising from the depths. The water splits around a hump of thick, mottled skin. With a sound like a horn blown underwater, two powerful jets of spray erupt from the creature's back. Identify it? Uh, what would this probably be under? Nature? Nature's not even a thing. Uh... Survival. Adair frowns down at the water. Bowhead, maybe? Or a wall face? Whale, either way. Let's reach out to the beast's mind. The thoughts swirling within feel more complex than you expected of a beast, with none of the blank coldness you have sensed from fish. Its mind is not as advanced as a wilder, but the creature certainly boasts more intelligence than a horse or cow. Oh, more powerful, more intelligence than a cow. It must be pretty fucking smart. It's the sea cow! Thoughts, crew? Tongue flicking across chapped lips, Kerger says, That's a wall face, Captain. Bass whale for hunting in the whole dead fire. Nia snorts. More likely a bowhead. You see that V-shaped spout? It's on account of it having two blowholes. Kerger scoffs. That doesn't make it anywhere as hunting. It does if it dives and sinks our skiff. Nia's eyes roll. Eld Ingram steps back, appalled. You'd kill one of Andra's harbingers and squander this blessing? Oh, if it's one of Andra's harbingers, I do want to kill it. I was going to let it go in peace, but... Nah, we'll let it pass in peace. Kegra sighs as the crew members resume their duties. You sail on. The great beast keeps pace with the ship for several hours, its song seeming to vibrate within the very planks of the sea cow. Eld Engram hums quietly along as Kerger tosses bits of food to the creature. Nia sighs. <laughs> they don't eat hardtack. <laughs> We're trying to feed hardtack to a whale? Chitupak chuckles. The ship sails on. Morale gained. Well, if we gained some morale... It's time to... Oh, I'm out of all the shitty drinks. So now we're having them drink plus one stuff only. So, hardtack time, folks. I need to go get some fucking ale or some water somewhere.
I'm going back to Tikawara. Does Andra try to throw a moon at the planet in the White March? Tears all trying to kill us and shit in, in the expansion to the first game. She's just generally super crazy. You should finish Pillars 1. That way, by the time you finish, this game will probably go on sale. That's a good idea, Asko. That is what you should do, actually. Good night, Jen. See you later. Thanks for coming by. Got a 10% discount here now. I'm gonna get like a hundred hard tack and a hundred water. Let's make it 200 water. I'm gonna sell all these medium shields, all these swords. Those exceptional great swords were worth a lot. Hold on to those. Okay. So I get 15 more thousand and a shitload of water and hard tack. my triumphs. Let's see if anybody has anything to say now that I've solved all their problems. Oh, look! 
As you near the dock, voices roar over the din of the waves. It seems as if the entire village has gathered. And many of them don't seem happy. Uh-oh. Thought they'd be happy. An angry crowd in the middle of nowhere. This seems familiar. They argue with one another, pointing into the distance. But at your approach, they turn to stare at you, their eyes wide with apprehension or anticipation. The crowd parts for the Ranga, whose scowl is as broad as his shoulders. The storms disappear, and with them, a great cloud of essence. He shakes with rage. My fishermen tell me your ship alone sailed from the island. He points an accusing finger. The sea cow is my home, not just my ship. Do not dance around the matter, I say. Now there will be no port to feed us. No valiant soldiers to defend us. For what did you ruin us so? I thought this would be best for you. The valians would bring trade, prosperity. Now, no one will come. He swallows, glancing up at the other villagers as if lost. Yeah, but now you guys can continue living your way of life that you've lived for thousands of years. And it's apparently always worked out for you. Before there was any Valians here to fuck with shit. Then we move on again. This was always our way, Ranga. The young priestess at Ruano's side steps forward, holding her narrow shoulders high. What did the other foreigners bring but death and grief? She raises her voice, and the others standing around prick up their ears. The dwarf at the edge of the crowd shuffles his feet. They wanted to be turned to the next great tourist trap. Yeah, that would suck. Ruano, Aimiko, thank you for your kindness, but it is time I moved on, no? He glances at you hopefully. Ruano scowls at this, then turns to you. I guess that's all I can say about it. If that's all, I should be going. So long as I am Ranga, you will find no shelter here. No welcome at any hearth in Tikawara. Man, I did this for you. Our people will bury your tracks with sand. You will be less than the lowest of us. Look, I know you think you wanted what you think you wanted, but you didn't really want it because you don't know what it would have actually turned into over time. And then all you motherfuckers would have been complaining about how the Valians have taken over too much and now everything you do has to be the Valian way. And now they've tricked you with fucking tricky contracts and fucked you over out of all of your everything and you barely get anything in re return from it, and now the Valians own everything, and you're beholden to them, and the Valians are basically your new masters, and they've destroyed your way of life, and your culture is completely eroding because of them, and you would be complaining about all that. And you'd say, gosh, I wish somebody would have just destroyed that fucking Audra. But no, now none of that's going to happen to you. But you can be mad at me if you want. He glares at the rest of the tribe as he says this. The shrine must shelter any traveler Amira's winds send to us. Our guest will be welcome there. Nairi gives you a faint nod, ignoring Ruanu's widening scowl. You know the ways of the gods. He waves a hand. Ruanu grunts and raises an arm to dismiss the villagers. Perhaps now the company can get on with more useful endeavors. Her eyes grow wide and blink several times, as though she is trying to rouse herself from a bad dream. The others nod and disperse, murmuring to one another as they scatter across the village. Pointless anyway, seeing as you were able to re-glow Audra before. That's true, Askel. Well, people here weren't thrilled. Now there's talk of going to Nekataka.
For what do you linger here? The village is mine. That's what she said before. Spectre gonna join my crew? Soon the director will send the ship to fetch the rest of the supplies. And me. Unless uh, you have room on your ship. She looks at you, kneading his knuckles. Your captain had some dark plans for the tribe. Quay, what do you mean? He takes the pages from you and flips through them. Then he stops, one hand frozen above the stained paper. He looks up at you and laughs nervously. Per complain, you cannot take this thing so seriously. As I was an academy brat hoping to catch the director's notice. Yeah, you can't take it seriously when she wants to capture the entire village and, and use them as human sacrifice to power up some Audra so that you can then take that powered up Audra, grind it into powder and sell it. Yeah, no, no it's not a big deal. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just kids having... She's just a rascal. That Beza, such a rascal. Fresh beads of sweat pop from his forehead. And anyway, this has nothing to do with me. I'm just a cook. Vector tugs at his collar, peeling the sweat-soaked cloth from his chest. Not your fault and not your problem. A familiar refrain. Palagina nods, liking the dutifulness. I will see if this gets back to the director in Neketaka. No need to worry. He gives you a strained smile and tucks the papers away as fast as he can. I found the remains of your expedition. That you mean? Madiko. His thick brows rise in alarm. If the expedition failed, the company will hesitate to finance a second one. They might close the book forever. He sighs, scratching his head. You sweat too much over too little, Victor. I have never known the company to hold the expedition's coup company. responsible for its success or failure. Captain Bez always said that the cook is the heart of morale. Can you not imagine why I am high-strung, with a crew's fortunes balanced on every dish? If their work was finished, their families in the Republics would be compensated. He looks at you beseechingly. I'll see what I can do. Agrasima. He bows his head. The sea cow could use a cook, unless you'd rather stay here. I, Mika. Anything is better than waiting on this beach. Vector is available to crew your ship. He's a shitty cook. And he can't do anything else. Well, Vector, congratulations. I don't know what you thought you were doing with your life. But now you're going to be sitting in this known sailor's fucking bin of mine forever. <laughs> Soon the director will send it. Unless... Uh, Ecosi, but I'm almost out... Yeah, okay. Vector got binned. Yeah. Bin it to win it. Oh, I still need to... Okay. I need to bring Maya here and talk to fucking time to lean, time to clean guy. You, wait right there. I'm sure that won't be a problem. He got sailor zoned. The na the known sailors too, the ones that aren't actually on the ship, they don't get part of the pay. So he'll just be sitting around in port forever, never getting to come on the ship, never getting paid. But always expected to be available for me at any moment's notice. <laughs> How do you like that, Vector? Uh, okay. I need to grab um, Maya. So we can do some of her clandestine spy shit, which she's pretending is just routine administrative paperwork. Wait a minute. 
I don't. I might not have to get on the ship for this. Look at mods over there for Pillars 1. I haven't the slightest idea. The only mod I used for Pillars 1 is one that let me move regular speed while in stealth. I don't remember. I think I got it on the Nexus somewhere. For what do you linger here? Did you not hear the Ranga's words? No home in Tikawara may offer you shelter now. Because Nairi spoke for you, you can sleep in the shrine. If the sound of chants don't keep you awake. I don't really want to sleep. I just want to access the thing that says I can change my party members out. Fine, I'll go back to the fucking ship. Hey. When did I get 111 hit points? When did we go up to level 12? And I didn't notice. We leveled up and my character now has over 100 hit points. Or she got- oh, she's got Ingati's Blessing giving her plus 2 constitution. Tell me. Why does she have Ingati's Blessing? That's why she has 111 hit points. Where the fuck- no, I don't want that! Get out of here, Ingati's Blessing! Happy to oblige. I don't want to be blessed by her. Okay. Oh. Get your fil get your filthy filthy hit points off of me, Andra. All right, let's go onto the ship. Have the whole loading screen to go to the ship thing. Change party members and have the whole loading screen to come back to town. Grumble, 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 grumble. I said grumble, 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 grumble. Grumble, 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 grumble. His name is Grimble Grumble. Aloth, I need you to take a quick break. Maya, welcome back. None. No imports or exports. Didn't it have imports and exports before? I think I might have screwed him out of having any imports or exports. Well, whatever. They're fine. Now the storms are over so they can go back to hunting and fishing and growing food and doing all the normal shit. I don't want to go to any of those places. Grumble, grumble. Alright, look, Maya. You can have... This. Are you happy? Exceptional. Ooh, it's fancy looking. Archibus. But don't think I'm gonna even bother leveling you up right now because... Also, I'm gonna take these things. Fun trade between friends. Because... Even if you were in my party, you wouldn't use them. So... Taking your hat, too. No, you can keep your stupid hat. Certainly. Do you even know your hat? 
Do you know your hat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know your hat? Your orders, Captain? My orders are... Indeed. Keho, how you been? So the hatching scampered off then. He scratches the back of his head and tries. I hope they recall this as nothing but a bad dream. Ikira. Fine. Alright. Fucking time to lean, time to clean guy. Now do you have time to talk to us, motherfucker? Step back, all of you. Uh-oh. Something's going on here. The broad-shouldered Anmawa at the center of the huddle takes a cautious step back. His gaze never breaks from the tribesmen who have him surrounded, and his hands never stray far from his weapons. You've all got the wrong idea. I'm waiting for a shipment of sailcloth from the homeland. Is that going to be a problem? His expression turns stony as the implied threat crosses his lips. Then what say you about this? Coded gibberish, or I'm an Orlin. Someone from the crowd tosses a sheaf of papers to the ground by Harama's feet. The assembled tribesmen mutter their assent. See, I knew they were fucking spies. Damn it. He's about two seconds away from starting a brawl. I've got to step in. Maya furrows her brow. I'll follow your lead. She clears her throat loud enough to turn heads in the direction of your party. One against a mob isn't exactly even. Ever heard of a fair fight? Maya cracks her knuckles and rolls her shoulders. Cody likes that. Ha! Company warships blow our canoes to splinters, and you call us unfair? You foreign imps are all the same. Turning to you and Maya, Harama gives away no recognition other than a flicker of gratitude. An angry mob is my least favorite mob. What seems to be the problem here? As surely as sharks circle spilled blood, this one has been casting an unwelcome shadow on our village. One of the villagers steps forward and gestures to Harama. We found coded documents in his quarters, and he defended himself with lies, outsider spy. Mutters of assent rise in volume from the assembled villagers. What makes you think it's anything nefarious? Because Rawatai hungers after these isles, like a tiger lurking in the tall grass and wetting its chops. Hmm. If I'd known that, I might have made a different decision with the, uh, pillar. If you townies are dumb enough to go blundering into an alpha predator, you deserve what's coming to you. Maya squares her stance and shakes her head. Who are you to speak in his defense? And who is your traitor friend who postures like she is not one of us? Jeers and rude gestures fill the air, many of them aimed at Maya. I've done good by your people, if you would but remember my face. Whispers spread among the group as the fighters struggle to recall where they recognize your features. You hear the muted ripple of agreement smother their suspicion. Rama, we will have eyes on you. Cause no trouble. A leader of the gang points from his eyes to Arama's and then signals the rest to depart. I owe you thanks for that, stranger. The big Rawatayan stands at ease and looks you up and down, nodding with approval. Now here is a welcome sight. He turns to face Maya, and a smile brightens his features. Is that little Ashiza? Hop over here, you old terror! Harama opens his arms, and Maya's bird darts enthusiastically closer, pecking at Harama's shins. Ishi town. You don't know where he's been. Maya arches her brow, smiling in spite of herself. I'll say nothing. I would say that we should visit the closest tavern and toast to life. But for once, I might be the odd man out. He appraises you with a curious smirk. Captain, this is Harama. We were shipmates on the Flying Buttress. The Flying Buttress! She nods to him, their eye contact lingering an extra moment. 
And they were ex-lovers as well, I take it. That's a word for it. You could also say we were... Loyal servants of the homeland. That's enough out of you. Maya touches her brow and shakes her head, hiding the hint of a smile. Shorty likes that. Afraid this isn't a social visit. This comes from up high. She passes him a roll of parchment. Yeah, it's spy shit. It's... it's... coup shit. It's... military takeover of the dead fire related shit. Palagina's cape is going crazy, is it? His demeanor hardens the moment he unseals the missive. Worming his tongue over his teeth, Harama lifts up the parchment to view it against a light source. Sealed world, okay. Atsura's up to his tricks again, I see. Thank you, Maya. I've been waiting for this. What did Atsura send you? Maya, why is she asking? Harama squints at you, hesitating to say more. Captain, later. I promise we can discuss it later. I guess we're done here. It's been, well, sort of like old times. In a good way. Maya grins, planting her hands on her hips. Especially seeing you coming and going again. When the dust settles, maybe we could... It trails off, shifting his weight. I'd like that. Ishii misses you something awful. Say no more. Good luck in your travels and other adventures. Ishiza, you keep your feathers clean. He salutes Maya and steps back with a wink. I need to check in with Atsura. Mind if we take a detour to the Brass Citadel? Maya raises her brow. Reporting in on your mission, I take it? Something like that. Atsura probably wants to make sure I'm not wasting too many resources on his little errand. Nothing to worry about. Maya shrugs, gesturing to be off. Maya needs to return to the Brass Citadel in Nekataka. Spy shit, spy shit. This ain't my first rodeo. That's okay, because we have to go back to the Brass Citadel to turn in... Well, this quest and this quest. And we gotta go back to the Valiant Tr Kate Trading Company for this quest. And we gotta return to Barati for that quest. And we gotta go back to the Brass Citadel for this quest as well. Speak freely. You probably have some questions about what we've been doing. My sighs, nodding. We found Harama in quite a state, didn't we? It's no wonder you'd be curious about what's going on. Harama is a sociable type of guy. Getting to know people is as easy to him as breathing as to you or me. Atsura set him loose so he can get to know as many people as possible. He's a spy. That's one way you could put it. He's keeping an eye on Tikawara. Who comes and goes, what sorts of things they discuss. Atsura is committed to a more peaceful dead fire. Mm -hmm. But he's just one man. He needs good people to shoulder the burden with him. Palagina likes the dutifulness. A more peaceful dead fire. See, that's always the excuse these motherfuckers use, right? They're like, we're gonna bring peace to this land. And by peace, we mean everyone has to do what we say. And if everyone's just united under us as our functional slaves, then there will be so much peace. Hashtag so much peace. If you want peace, just serve us. Yay, peace. Hmm. That mob said he had coded missives. Was that true? Eh, uh, maybe. Probably. Maya shrugs. Let's just say we're not the first people to deliver Harama a missive that looked like one thing and read like another. What have we been delivering, Maya? Truthfully? I don't know. 
They look like ordinary documents to me, but I'm sure that's how Atsura wanted it. Atsura has a new code for every hour of the day. He probably has cipher keys tattooed all over his body. So Harama has just eyes and ears? Only Atsura knows for sure. Harama might not even have all the facts. I certainly don't. What's to stop me from telling Onakaza and Aruihi about this? Don't be dense. They're smart enough to assume that Rawatai has spies. And if they're really smart, they're spying on us too. Though I doubt it. That's all for now. For what it's worth, you're doing a great thing for the Deadfire. You'll see that someday. No, I don't think I will. No, I, I think when you motherfuckers try to take over, I'm going to be killing a whole lot of Rawatians. Let's be off. I shall. Not even bothering to level her up right now. Because she is now exiting my party. I wonder if, like, you know how it says population 64? I wonder if you went into town and killed a few people. If that thing would update. <laughs> I mean, like, population 61. <laughs> Aloth, welcome back. Still got all those buffs. Well, I still I still have two islands I need to find. Let's go north and see what we find. I mean, how is this not one of the islands? It's gotta be. Even though I've been on this island, and I've explored it, I never got a chance to name it. So, it's like this isn't actually one of them, but this is one of the islands around Tikawara, and it looks uncharted to me, there's nothing here. But I guess it's not good enough. Oh god, it's a storm. Kua or Rakuhu Islands. Well, here's an island. Maybe this is one of them. All I know is this is a great time for a super fast break and the end of an episode. If you're watching on YouTube, this episode is now over. If you're watching on Twitch, don't go anywhere because I'm not done streaming. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity 2 
Deadfire. 